What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we'll be chatting with Nick Angstad of Locked On Mavs as Luka Doncic makes his return to the Mavericks lineup and Dirk Nowitzki sees his number 41 raised to the rafters of the American Airlines Arena. But first, a quick message from our friends over at Built Bar because look, it's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit, or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your New Year's plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. They make it so easy to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or gritty or the consistency is a little bit off, right? With Built Bar, they've also got so many amazing flavors to choose from. Strawberry, cookies and cream, mint brownie, coconut brownie chunk, my personal favorite. You can't go wrong with a single flavor on their menu. And you can check them out. Just go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your very next order of the best tasting protein bars on the market. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Joining us now is Nick Angstad of Locked On Mavs, one half of Locked On Mavs, my 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 least favorite half of Locked On Mavs. No, <laughs> I'm kidding, Nick. I'm kidding. I got to poke a little Ooh. fun at you when I bring you on here. Also, Ooh. host of Locked On NBA. No, Nick, it's been a it's been a a very eventful week for the Dallas Mavericks. You get Luka Doncic back in the rotation. Dirk New- Dirk Nowitzki has his you know jersey retirement ceremony. We're gonna get to all that, but we got to start with Luka. It just I mean, what he's back with the team. How has he looked since his return? He looks the same. Looks like Luca, right? <laughs> looks, looks like big and in char- large and in charge. I guess is the way that I can put it. Uh, against the Bulls, has 20, 22, 14, and 14 on uh, like 34% shooting on that Sunday night game. And uh, he helps beat the Warriors. Like Luca just continues to be the player that. Uh, he is, and it's it's leading the Mavs to this this record that they're at right now, and it's leading them in this this winning streak. And uh, the Mavs defense has has now started to support the things that he's been doing all year, and so that's been incredible to watch. Watching a Mavs team without Luca for as long as we did, right? That like thirteen game stretch or however long it was, thirteen day stretch or whatever it was, was I do not want to do that again, Jackson. I don't. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you won't have to do it again this season. Hopefully he's back and, and and no no more messiness with the Mavs lineup, knock on wood, all that good stuff. But you, you mentioned the defense. This Mavs defense has been absurd as of late. Over the last seven games, they've held six of their last seven opponents to under 100 points scored. Who was one of the know, ones that they didn't help hold to 100? Ah, uh, <laughs> we're not we're we're not going to talk about that team that's uh, sitting at the bottom of the Western Conference. I don't want to do that. Not on this podcast. <laughs> um, no, and it was again, it was largely in garbage time. So we're just not going to pretend it was a, it was a wire to wire. The pace blowout. of that we're game gonna, was real different. We're not going to talk about that 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 game or the hot dog from that night or any of the Ooh, any of the stuff. Yeah, you got to go go look at his Jackson's Twitter for that hot dog he ate. <laughs> That was, yeah, if you uh, if you want to go see uh, a, a national headline story, the the hot dog that the Rockets unveiled at the Rockets Mavericks game this last Friday, that was a good one. Anyways, let's stop derailing <laughs> this Maverick centered segment. It's Nick. you and me. Oh. It's not gonna not be derailed anytime you and I get together on a podcast. Oh man, it, this should be banned. Like I should just have to reach out to <laughs> it's Isaac. It's why please. I haven't put us together on Lockdown NBA ever. Like besides this, like I just I don't think that we would make it. We probably would not for a full three <laughs> segments. At least we only have to do the one here. But on the defensive end, right? The Mavs are, are winning, but they're doing it with defense. What what kind of growth have you seen on that side of the floor that's that's you know kind of changed the the you know the th- the I guess it's the entire approach for this team on that side? Yeah, it's been night and day. It's it's absolutely insane. At the beginning of the off season, when Jason Kidd was hired, he comes in and does his introductory press conference, and he goes up to the mic. He says, "You know, this year." We're going to play a little defense. And that that line just is one of those like earworms, right? Where it just sticks in your head and you just hear it over and over again. I can just hear Jason Kidd say, this year, we're going to play a little defense. And the beginning of the year, the Mavs were one of the worst defenses in the NBA. And so you're saying, where is this defense? Where are the Mavericks finding this defense? They haven't changed personnel that much from the last couple of years. And they've been in the bottom 10 of you know defensive teams over the last couple of years, they've been an incredible offensive team, but a terrible defense team. Then a little bit, a little way through the season, maybe like a month ago or so, Jason Kidd says, this team is not built for defense. This team is built for offense. And so you say, okay, well now Jason Kidd doesn't even believe that this team can play defense. And so now where do the Mavs stand? So over this last month or so, the Mavericks have started to communicate more. They've started to to talk more on defense. They've started to be, to play personnel that, that allows them to, 
play the kind of defense they have. It hasn't been as much like Luka, KP, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Jalen Brunson. When you play all four of those guys together, your defense just you cannot hold up. And so Dorian, Maxi Kleba being back. Reggie Bullock being back. Josh Green starting to step into a role where he can actually be a viable player. Sterling Brown. All those guys are all real switchable wings. And having guys like that that are interconnected, that know when to rotate to the right spots, that are seemingly, at this point in the year, coached well, it has been a a, a night and day difference from when the Mavericks started the season to where the Mavericks are right now. We're now, you know, basically nearing or right at about the halfway point of the season for most teams are kind of right at about that point. And obviously Dallas, like, you know, many other teams have dealt with, you know, lineup issues and some inconsistencies there. It's just kind of the the new NBA norm at this point, be it injuries, COVID protocols, all that stuff. But past all that, how would you rate the Jason Kidd experience so far for this Dallas Mavericks team? I mean, it's incomplete. Like he's not even coaching right now. He's in health and safety protocols himself, right? Yeah. The Mavericks have been, I think they're in the top five of teams that have, have lost the most games to health and safety protocols so far this year. And so top, I said top five, like it's a stat you want to be high in, right? Like, no, they're bottom five, I guess. Bottom five, there you go. They've lost, they've lost some of the most games to you know to COVID. Luca's there, KP's in there right now. And the Mavericks have only had Luca and KP together for 15 games this year. And so we have not seen, we just haven't seen this team at full strength for long stretches of time. And so I can't really, I, I can't really give Jason Kidd a definitive grade. I can say some things that have been good, have been positive. Uh, Jason Kidd, this has been a drop that I've been using so much on our show. This is a positive world. Jason Kidd is trying his his damnedest to be as positive as he possibly can at all points of this season because he knows what his reputation has been. He got asked about it all offseason. He got asked about it from us, about his exit from the Brooklyn Nets, his exit from the Bucks. Heck, his exit from da- the Dallas Mavericks as a player the first time. His exit from the Suns as a player. He's had all these different places where it just doesn't end up well for him. And he's had all these negative exp- you know, experiences. You, the book from Mirren Fader comes out over the offseason about you know Jason Kidd having his team run suicides to the point where Larry Sanders has to go to the hospital on Christmas. right? Like All these things you've been hearing about Jason Kidd. And he's trying to really turn the page and take a different, you know, a different look at it this season. And I think he's I think he's succeeded. He's empowered these players. We've had Tim Hardaway Jr. and Reggie Bullock without being prompted say, hey, Jason Kidd has coached us up well. He is he's putting us in a, a position to succeed. Um, Jason Kidd wasn't playing or it wasn't uh, coaching against the Warriors the other against the uh, the Rockets the other night. And Tim Hardaway Jr. comes out and says this win was because of Jason Kidd. This win was because of what Jason Kidd has instilled in this team. Uh, Luka and KP don't play. The Mavericks still get a win against the young Rockets team. And he credited Jason Kidd, who wasn't even on the sidelines because he's out in health and safety protocols. So he's got the buy-in of this team is you know the roundabout way to say that. The team is buying in. The team is believing in what he's saying. They're, they're picking up what he's putting down, basically. And uh, it's working right now. Jalen Brunson has been incredibly impactful for this Mavericks team, but you know, he started the season coming off the bench. He's stepped into a starter's role. Do you think that's the role that he's going to occupy for the rest of the season? Where's your head at as to whether or not you'd like to see him maybe go back to that role as like the scoring punch off the bench, or do you want to see him get those starters reps alongside Luca and the other guys? Coming into the season and going into last offseason, we said, all right, the Mavericks have to find a secondary creator, secondary shot creator, secondary playmaker next to Luca. Brunson has stepped up into that role for what the Mavericks have right now. It, it's, it'd be interesting if the Mavericks could upgrade that spot right now at the trade deadline. I don't know if there's many players like available right now that would upgrade that position. And so I think Brunson has become a starter. He stepped in and there have been many times this year where he's their second best player. And I think maybe at this point in the year, we're at that with, with KP's availability counted and all that. And so he's been absolutely incredible. The problem is, can you play the level of defense that the Mavericks have played over the stretch with Luca? you know, KP and Jalen Brunson all playing at the same time. You can't do it with Tim Hardaway and those three guys all at the same time. But can you get away with it with those three guys? That'll be an interesting thing to see. We just haven't seen it very much. Wednesday night, the Mavs retired Dirk Nowitzki's number 41, Mm. raising it to the rafters. Look, a player that regardless of fandom, yes, as Nick points, if you're watching on YouTube, Nick points to the jersey in the background. Oh, he breaks it out. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The brand new one that they just dropped recently. Loving it. I love it. Uh, You know, regardless of fandom or team affiliation, right, you have to appreciate the impact that Dirk has had on the game of basketball. Nick, you were in the building for that Jersey retirement. What was that night like? It was incredible. As a person that uh, 
you know, grew up as a person of, of German heritage that grew up and watched this guy play and watched him do the things that he did and step up and, and, and uh, win that title in 2011. And to do it all while still being the same person that he is and the same, um, you know, goofball, but also just incredibly um, generous with his time and resources and, and just a, an incredible teammate. No one ever has a bad thing to say about Dirk except for himself, right? Like if that if that's the case, then you're an incredible person. And so I thought that the um, Jersey retirement reflected that. It reflected all of what, you know, Dirk has done for this this franchise. You had Steve Nash on the, um, on the the video tribute saying, you know, they get, they named a street after him outside of the American Airlines Center. They put the silhouette on the court and it's still there every single game. And now the jersey retirement, it's just it's just a little bit too much. <laughs> That's what Steve Nash said. And uh, yeah, maybe it's getting to the point that, but he deserves all of it, right? He deserves every single thing. I'm not sure that there's a jersey retirement that means as much to a franchise as Dirk's for the Mavericks. You can maybe talk me into Michael Jordan <laughs> for the Bulls. <laughs> But even still, like Dirk means so much of this franchise because of what they had before Dirk, which was not a lot, and now what they've they've been able to uh, achieve and to um, what Dirk has been able to bring to this city and this franchise. You know, and you, you highlighted this. There was a moment during that retirement ceremony where he was, you know, with Luca, I believe, and he kind of pointed up to the rafters talking to Luca. And you know, what was your interpretation of that moment? Yeah, so after afterwards, you know, there's a big mob on the court where they're hugging and you know getting pictures and during the during the ceremony, so they have, you know, the orchestra on one side of the court and all these chairs, and then you have this line of chairs which was basically a 2011 Mavs reunion and then Luca and Adam Silver and, and or no, Dirk and Adam Silver and, and Mark Cuban and Dirk's family and all that were on the other side. And then all the Mavs players were just kind of in chairs somewhere around where the Mavs bench is. And so they're just all hanging out there the entire time. Sterling Brown's going live on IG like the entire time. So I'm sitting there watching him. You got other guys. Marquise Chris is going live on IG. And uh, and so I'm just sitting there. And as soon as it ends, Dirk has to go through this processional of all these guys that he's shaking hands with and people that are asking to take pictures with him. The custodian, Brian Cardinal, is walking up, taking a selfie with him. And then I'm waiting. I'm waiting around. And I waited for probably a good 25 minutes. For Luca and Dirk to embrace. And they did. And I just I whipped out my binoculars from where I was. And I was just like, I just need to see what these guys are going to do. And they hugged. And then Dirk kind of just a little, just a little point pointed up to the rafters and pointed up and, and then pointed to Luca. And you just, you just get the sense that Dirk passed the torch as best he could to Luca for this franchise. And I hope that Luca picks up that mantle and picks up that torch and runs with it in the way that Dirk did. I don't know if anybody can replicate what Dirk did. But I'm I'm hoping that that Luca takes that responsibility of what Dirk had for this franchise. It's like, all right, this is my franchise. I own this. I'm gonna own this moment. I'm gonna own what happens to this franchise. And I hope Luca does the same. A big moment from one all-time great to another future, likely all-time great in Luka Doncic. Nick, appreciate you stopping by. You're gonna have us covered for everything Mavericks over at Locked On Mavericks. Thanks for stopping by Locked On NBA with me. Anytime.